He is a rock icon, a legend, and now member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He is Bruce Springsteen. For the past 30 years, he's been writing extraordinary songs about ordinary people. The River, Born to Run, Born in the USA, and Streets of Philadelphia, just to name a few, a very few. He has won eight Grammys and an Oscar for his achievements. Bruce Springsteen Tracks is his new four-CD set that features 56 previously unreleased songs and is garnering some of the best reviews of his career. In addition to songwriting, he's also known for his legendary, intense concert performances that have lasted as long as four hours and more. Welcome. Thank you. Glad it's great to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> There's so much to talk about. Let me just begin in looking at that concert. Um, <laughs> memories for you, uh, when you see all that video footage of all those years where you've entertained so many people, was that the ultimate joy to be performing in front of a live audience or was it be sitting at home on a table like this writing a song? <laughs> uh, writing's always the hardest work, you know. That looked like a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think the, the writing is the, uh, it's the blueprint of, of what you're going to do, you know. In, in other words, you sort of, it's, it's the essence of your idea that you're going to try to communicate to your audience and the show is is taking that thing and, and uh, you, you expand it performing it and performing it well sort of expands its boundaries and and its power and you flesh it out and and uh, entertain people with it you know uh, but I think it's it, it, the, I enjoy the writing a lot you know I mean it's hard and it's always hard to write a good song so you, you always need to have a new idea of some sort and but that sort of thing, that's, that's the release that you feel after you've done the writing and you come out and you're finally face to face and you're speaking to somebody. That's why you wrote that song, you know. To connect. Uh, yeah, that's why, you know, we picked up the guitar and put the band together and, and wrote that song. So that's the fulfillment of, of the whole process you know, in some fashion. You drove yourself through four hours, sometimes longer, <laughs> to almost exhaustion. Uh, to exhaustion. To exhaustion. <laughs> <laughs> that was how you would know. I could not go one more song. Is that it? So, uh, I don't know. It, 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 it's on certain nights, I suppose, you know. Uh, but um, it, was, it was an outgrowth of just playing in bars, really. I think that, that a four-hour show, was when we did it, was something. There were only maybe a few other bands doing it, and it was yeah. something that didn't happen in a concert setting. But it happened every night in, in bars all across America. <laughs> yeah. There and were other guys doing four hours. Plenty. They just weren't playing for more, a stadium know? full of people. <laughs> they had more. And so really, I think the length of the show came out of, out of, out of two things. Once I, once I had a few records out, I wanted to play the songs that the fans wanted to hear, and I wanted to play all my new songs, too. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and then also, I'd, we'd gotten used to playing three hours, in minimum of three hours in a bar, and you didn't feel like you'd done it in some fashion. And I wanted it to be an extreme experience also. I, I wanted it to be an experience that wasn't casual, that was somehow, uh, that, that pushed it to limits. It pushed it to limits. And, and so I wanted that extremist. And I wanted people to see, to be brought to some place and to come out of themselves and, and, uh, uh, and to be there, you know, so. Would you test out songs at concerts or did it have to be Perfect. Before you would perform it in front no, of a lot. Was, uh, we played probably Born to Run. We played uh, uh, quite a bit before I ever recorded it in some slightly different versions. In the earlier earlier days, you'd go out and and uh, if I had something I was excited about, I'd come out and play it. You know, uh, and so I think that there was initially a lot of of audience. I don't know if it was a test, but it was just something you were excited about doing. If you had a great riff, you wanted to hear it. You wanted to hear yeah. it that night. You know, yeah. if I had the, <laughs> if I had most of the words that went with it, sometimes I'd give it a shot. You know, uh, that changed a little bit as we went on. Yeah, if I had a new song I liked, I'd come out and play it. You know, I played the river before it was recorded, and and uh, it was you know you just felt it had a, an urgency that you wanted to. You know, tonight's the night. I gotta, you know, I gotta, I gotta sing that tonight. Fifty six of these songs we've never heard before in this four, That's what they four, say. That, well, <laughs> <laughs> ten of them we've heard right. before, and, and some in different versions, like Born in the USA. Yeah. There's a version here Yeah. that's raw. Right, it's a different, it was the original version that I cut in my bedroom, you know. Uh, but you know, the 56 has not been uh, released before. Yeah. 
and I think ten of them are some of them are B sides and, and some other and a few other things that that I wanted to include. But uh, yeah, the original version of Born in the USA that that should have probably went on Nebraska, maybe I don't know, you yeah. know. <laughs> but uh, you didn't put it in at that time. Uh, I didn't think it was finished, and it was uh, it was one of my first songs about Vietnam, and I was trying to. I think I wanted to make sure I had it right, and and uh, I wasn't quite sure that that I'd finished it. Listening back, it was it came out pretty good, really. And I think now I'd I might have, if I was making that decision today, I probably would have put it on, you know. Put it in Nebraska. Yeah, I would have put it in Nebraska. But uh, uh, you know, that that at the moment I was I was careful with it, and I think what <clears throat> was see I was recording Nebraska and Born in the USA simultaneously, the the, the rock record. And uh, so I had sort of these two very different things going on. And one of the first things we did was cut the band version of Born in the USA. And when I heard that, I felt that that was really powerful. And uh, I knew that that was going to be the centerpiece of, of the, the music I was doing at that time. And so I went with the band version. How was it for you to go back and through to the very beginning? And listen, I mean, you have John Hammond, the great legendary mm -hmm. Uh, CBS radio executive at the beginning of this who in a sense saw you yeah. and heard you and right. said right that was a big thrill <laughs> yeah. um, but how was it for you to go back and listen and hear songs that you had uh, for whatever reason said not ready not <laughs> now not this album it, it was fun it was it was enjoyable to do now because uh, uh, what it is, is is at the time you're making those decisions you're you put a lot of pressure on yourself sometimes I'd have a a particular theme or context going for a, for a particular record and and you're caught in a very specific moment in time and, and many of your decisions are coming out of out of that state of mind I think you get to go back 10 20 years later and and you're you're free of that of that context and you can just hear the music as it was played and as it was you know you're not concerned about whether this fits in this particular record or what kind of song it is the music is just what it is and so it was nice to go to to go back and enjoy the stuff just for what it was and and when i was able to do that and get outside of my own head about it i realized that oh that could have went on and this could have went on and, and boy i, I should have put that song on and, and i tried to pick the things that were that i felt were as good as the stuff we released i went very carefully through the hundreds of songs that we had and and things that that felt like they could have come right off of those records in some fashion or another the quality that kind of quality where are you musically now, you think? I mean, you, I've heard that there is almost a country and western <laughs> <laughs> collection of songs. This has been, uh, I've been asked about this. Uh, I make a lot of different kinds of music, you know, and, and all the time. I think that uh, uh, basically, uh, you know, I've made country music. And, and Why didn't you release I have that? a lot of different types of projects. Uh, they're not finished or that's right. something you're, you're, you're passing through for a moment. And... Uh, uh, or it's just something you're, you know, at the, I mean, that particular thing came through uh, the Tom Joad record, where the Tom right. Joad material was so intense that in between, in between cutting the story songs, I'd, I'd have a western swing thing, and I had a small little country combo with Gary Talent and Danny Federici and uh, a great steel player, uh, Marty Rifkin from Los Angeles. And so we'd just move into things that felt conducive to that instrumentation, but it, it never formed into a record. And for this record... I was very, I specifically chose things that, that came from records that I'd released, that yeah. there'd be a context for for my fans to go back. And if you like The River, there's an album from The River. If you like Born in the USA, there's almost an entire album from Born in the USA. Uh, so I, I, wanted, I wanted the things in this collection to refer back to the records that I'd released and fill those records out and give people a, a broader idea of, of what I was doing in the studio and the kind of music we were making. Yeah, so this, in a sense, is an insight to where your head was. I mean, more so than just what you saw. And some say it's a kind of an alternative vision. Yeah, I'd say that it, it's a bit of an alternative career in some fashion. Yeah. That there was an, you know, like it was the music. There's that, like this career you took, and this is the career that might have taken. The road, on, yeah, road, yeah, and, and, the road I mean, not they, taken, the road on taken. On certain records, they intersect more, and on certain ones, they wouldn't. You know, there's party songs from Darkness on the Edge of Town, <laughs> and, <laughs> and so there's a, a lot of things that were from the River, the second CD, which is a River collection, could have come out on that record, and and, uh, and I tended to leave off things that that sometimes I, I veered away from things that felt. Uh, uh, I hate to say they were not too entertaining, but 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 
I was, I always, I tried to have a very hard focus on, 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 my, on my records, and it was a part of the way that I protected myself at the time, and I think I protected my identity and, and who I wanted to be and what I wanted to say, and so I made a lot of tough decisions and, and left off a lot of music that was actually very <laughs> enjoyable that I'm glad I can get out now. Why isn't the promise in this set? Yeah, I've been... <laughs> Uh, basically, I went back and I listened to it, and uh, we never really got a good recording of it, in my opinion. You know, it's a, it's been a favorite song of a lot of a lot of people mentioned that one to me, and it sort of was a, the sequel to Thunder Road in some fashion. Yeah. It referred back to those characters, but I went back and and we sort of had a very plodding, heavy-handed version of it, and and I couldn't I couldn't quite live with it. So maybe another time. <laughs> <laughs> you know how much your fans are asking about this. Yeah, they, I've had a few, what happened to the fever and... Yeah, well, <laughs> that's stuff. the other, that's my second question, what happened to the fever? You know, it's stuff that just has been, that was something that, I had a sequence at one time and, and it, it was very long and, and Southside did a great version of it and it's never been one of my favorites, so it was sort of a, uh, I said, well, I'll put this on a B-side or something, but, uh, and it's kind of, it just, it was, it was sort of a sequencing decision, which kind of slowed the, the way that the music felt to me down when it came up. But does that mean we'll never see it? Well, it's been seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably seen in more homes than. than <laughs> but but uh, it'll, it, we have no, a nice I'm, we have a nice version of it, and, and yeah. it's, it's mixed. And I'll I'll probably get it out. I thought of putting it out on a on a B side if if we put a single yeah. out or something, you know. Where do you rank the wish? Um, that was a, f a funny song because it was after. Uh, uh, it was a song about my mom, which right. was which was I wrote a lot about my dad, you know, and yeah. <laughs> and uh, this was the uh, only song you wrote about your mom. Yeah, it was really yes, it was. You know, this is uh, the person directly. <laughs> this is the person most responsible, most responsible yeah. for your career. Yeah, a sixty dollar electric guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Way back when. So what does that mean? You know, yeah, I'm exactly. Actually, you know, is, is Why you wrote all these songs about your father? Does that mean it only comes out of? Sort of pain and not out of joy and not uh, out of what? No, I, I, it's so complicated. I mean, I could get on the couch here and we could, <laughs> we, could we could go on about it. But uh, uh, I, I've, I've said a few other places that that I think a son's relationship with his father, particularly, but with both your parents, it's your most closely observed relationship. It's 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 the relationship you watch every single day. You know about how to tie your shoes, you know, how to walk, you know, how to, how to address people, how to, how to, how to treat people. I mean, you're learning all those things and you internalize them. And I think that that's, as parents, you know, you can forget how closely you're being watched. You're being watched so closely, you know, uh, and, and that, that stuff goes in and it lays deep, you know, and it, it's there forever. And, uh, I think that, along with a lot of it, it was I think you tend to write about things that you're trying to sort out you know I think you're trying to write about things that you don't understand and you want to understand and so you're you're working on something to help you understand what that was all about you know who who were you or who was he uh, that's why it was that's a, a it was big part of what writing writing does I think you know a lot of, a lot of it, that's where it, it comes out of that particular fire you know uh, so I think that those are the things that, 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 that you carry and that you are always trying to, to put in context and make sense of. And, you, and uh, I did a lot of it through my work and things, you know, but, but uh, and my mother who was very consistent and, and, and was somebody who we had a relationship that, that was, uh, I don't know, it was easier to understand, you know was nurturing and and there was faith involved and, and support and uh, a, a lot of giving love you know uh, uh, you know that was something that uh, I shied away from writing about but I think writing about your mother and rock it's easy to write about your dad rock and roll because it's what it's angry uh, it's more it's angry born it's, out of rage it's, it's rebel you know it's it's rebellion. about rebellion it it, yeah. it, it it fits more in in what in, in the kinds of emotions that that rock came rock and roll came up out of, and so uh, you see songs about your mother's are gospel music. It was the gospel group called the Mother Lovers. I think yeah. at one time, I think that uh, uh, you know country musicians, you know, just uh, Merle Haggard, you know, 
my mama tried, you know. Yeah. And you, you see a lot more uh, of it in, in uh, uh, rap music, you know. There was, uh, 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 you know, so it's, uh, it's, it's, but it's, 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 it was a funny thing. It was, it was probably one of the most autobiographical songs I ever wrote, really. It was just very detailed and very specific, you know, incident by incident. And it was a mo sort of a very, that moment that sort of, you, like a, you don't know when, it was a very divining moment standing in front of a music store, you know, with someone who's going to do everything she can to give you what you needed that night, that day, you know, <laughs> without and having the faith that you were going to make, make sense of it or not, you know, that it was just what you needed and desired at that moment. It was a great sacrifice on her part. It was $60, but it was, uh, you know, finance company money, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so, so it was. So I finally got a song out about it. I gave it to her many years ago, but it's the first time it's been out on record. What did she say when she heard it? She liked it. Yeah, yeah she did. <laughs> about time, you know, or yeah. something, you know. <laughs> Let me just stay with the family for a second because you said once that the two most hated things in my household were me and the guitar. <laughs> your mother gave you the guitar, and yeah. and you at the end though your dad. And you came back together, got together, oh, yeah, sure. and he helped you understand what it meant to be a father for a son, yes? Or at least uh, Well, you, we, you learn, you learn by, you know, you don't learn by just the good things they taught you. You yeah. learn by your bad experiences. Uh, and uh, that's just the way that it goes, you know. We internalize everything and carry it with us. And, and our job, the way we create our lives, is by sorting those things out and sorting them through. That's how we honor our parents and honor the people who've taught us, you know, is, is in, in, in divining our own path and our own road through the things that they handed down, both the good things and the bad. You know, that's, that's uh, essential. You know, that, that's, that's how you find yourself and get to your place in the world. So you learn by, you know, you learn. It, it's, it's all a lesson, you know. I think with, with my son, I've, you know, I've tried to be patient and... and uh, uh, and not run and, and be there and, and, uh, and but I think also to respect their uh, wishes in some sense the, the, the serious wishes the, you know the, the serious desires that if they have an interest you know to uh, indulge it you know to that that's 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 how you you know you know you don't know you know you don't know what that moment might bring you know or the 10 15 years down the, the road I read a short story once and that was talking about a uh, a boy who went with his uncle fishing every Saturday. And then my uncle was just a fishing trip, you know. But to me, it was a permanent work of art that was constructed in my head. Yeah. And I'll carry that with me throughout your, you know, throughout my life, you know. And why do we think of things 30 years later, some small incident that we'll be thinking of when, when we're dying on our deathbed, you know. Some small incident that it had no apparent meaning on the day that it occurred, you know. Those are the things that, that that's the essence of, of what it's all about. And so you have to, I think when you address your children, you have to always be on the lookout for that, for that moment, you know, in some sense. But it's, it's not really, it should be just sort of a, a, a daily way of, of interacting with them, you know. So I've tried, to, I've tried to do that better. Do you know why you have such genius skill. <laughs> hey, I'm going to hire you. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. At, at songwriting. I mean, you, we, not me, the Hall of Fame will say something like this, you know, uh, what you've just been So I didn't think I did. I, to, I mean, the capacity to write a song that digs deep and understands and resonates. I mean, you didn't go to school to get that. You didn't have anybody even teach you that. You just sat down and did it. Well, right. Uh, there are a lot of teachers. I think there, there's a lot of, um, you know. First of all, I, I didn't think I, I I had a great talent at it. You know, I thought that I was somebody that was going to have to really work harder than the next guy. You know, to to formulate my own ideas and my own own visions. And 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 I did when I was a kid. I did work harder than everybody else. You know, I was I was eight hours in my room every night and six hours and. And when the, when the dance was on, I was the guy standing like you know, with his arms folded in front of the guitar player, you know, all night long, you know. Uh, uh, so uh, I felt that it was it was something that that I need I was going to have to work at very hard to to do well. And and uh, and then the 
rest is a certain amount of, I think, of psychology that comes with it. What kind of person are you? Are you a watcher? You know, are you somebody who, do you jump in and, and are you active right away? Or do you, or do you watch? Or do you stand back and observe? That was always my nature. My nature was I was standing back and I watched the way things inter interrelated and the way, uh, what was going on around me. I might have been too frightened to join in. I didn't know how to join in. So it was a part of, observation was a part of my psychology. And uh, I think that has a lot to do with people who then go on and write or, 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 or take their own thoughts and formulate them in some fashion. Uh, it's usually a, a, a result of a variety of dysfunctions that you've, that you've managed to, to channel into something positive and creative rather than destructive. And, uh, uh, and so it came out of that need, you know, to sorting yourself out once again. You know? So that's sort of... Uh, I think it was, it was it was easier for me to, to observe, and it's something that that uh, when you're when you're writing, and particularly with all different kinds of detail, it comes in handy. So it was part of it was I think natural, and part of it I worked really hard at. Well, this album, as I said, begins with John Hammond. You come to CBS, uh, and you've got some. They ask you to play what four songs? Yeah, no, it was a it was an afternoon, and uh, came up from. New Jersey on the bus, and and uh, it was, I didn't know how many songs. I thought it would be one song and out. <laughs> I wasn't sure, you know. I, I, I was, you didn't know what to expect. Well, I had a lot of confidence. I was pretty cocky, you know, and, and because I'd had a lot of success, you know. I, I'd, I mean, not big success, but, but I was, you know, I had a band, and we played to two or 3,000 people locally. You know, we, we drew a lot of people yeah. at one time with no record or anything else. So, Just word of mouth so, on it. Yeah, so I knew what it was like to play in front of thousands of people already. <laughs> and, and you knew you were doing something that was right. Yeah, somebody was saying, well, you know, I heard, yeah. hey, you're good. Hey, you're yeah, good. You're you good. can you do know? this. And, and I didn't know, I heard the guys on the radio, and I said, well, gee, I'm as good as some of these guys. And, and so I, I, <laughs> I, I, I went in with a certain... I went in with a certain confidence, but at the same time, at the bottom, you don't know. You know, this is, this is one of the greatest music figures. Uh, this is the man uh, who yeah, discovered Bob Dylan. Yeah, and so you're, you're walking in, and, and uh, uh, you know, you, I didn't know what, how, how, what the response might be, you know, but, but it was, I played a couple of songs, and... and what did he, he say to you? Uh, he always said, you got to be on Columbia Records. That was the first thing he said. You know? so that <laughs> no, that, no dummy there, that, Mr. Hammond. That eased the tension. <laughs> that, that eased the tension a lot for me, you know. He said, and, he said we, we can get along, Mr. Hammond. <laughs> you know, as a basis but, uh, here for... But I always remember a big smile, you know, because I was, I, was, I was looking down and I was playing and I was trying not to look up. I didn't want to, you know, and, and, and so finally I did a song. I, I think I play Saint in the City and I looked up and said, hey, you gotta be on Columbia Records and, and that's what he was like. He was he was this unbridled enthusiasm, you know, about all kinds of music. You know, yeah. I'd go to his house and he'd play me jazz and he'd play me all different types a, of a music. A teacher for you. Yeah, and and he was just endlessly enthusiastic about about anything he thought was 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 exciting, you know. But at the beginning, didn't they try to make you into a kind of new Dylan? Wasn't there a little uh, sense of... I probably did uh, helped out with that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> in what way? <laughs> well, I hate Bob. Was a, Dylan was a big, big influence, you know. And, yeah. and at that point in my life, I, I, yeah, I still, he's still, still a great hero of mine, you know. Uh, he played... And, uh, uh, and, and so I... But I, I think that... I, I know what you're saying. I think that at the time when you went in, you know, there was, there was those obvious connections in yeah. the music. I was writing a lot of lyrics, and my voice was kind of husky, and I, and I physically... You know, yeah. had a lean, lean look, and and uh, and so, and it happens with every artist. This, this is you got to be, you know. There's very rarely, and we like to present you with something you just have never heard of, you've never seen before. You know, they 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 were trying to make, I suppose, some some connection. It was funny at the time. I remember my first photo shoot was in New York City, and there was, <laughs> and it was my it was my first introduction to like somebody was going to try and manage my life now. In yeah. some fashion, and if I wasn't careful, manage also my identity, and that was something that I, I was very frightened of. That's why I was walking down the boardwalk one day, and I pulled a postcard out of the rack <coughs> outside a little uh, gift shop in Asbury Park, and I brought it up to the record company and I said, "Yeah, well, I want this to be the album cover because I'm from New Jersey, you know." Yeah. And it was a way of saying that this was greetings from Asbury Park. Yeah, that was a postcard. <laughs> and, and you said this is the cover. 
well, uh, yeah, I said, I said, I'd like this to be I'd the like cover. Be the cover. <laughs> and they said? And they said, okay, you know. Oh, that was yeah. it? Yeah, they said, all right. And, and uh, they said, yeah, this is great. Yeah. And so it was, it was, it was terrific. I think that, that what it is, is I, what I found with, with record companies in general, if you know what you want to do, you know, and you're sure about what you want to do <laughs> yes. and who you are, you know, very often, not always, you know, there's somebody, oh, that, that sounds like a great idea. They'll listen, you know. Uh, and so... I forget. I remember. I was shocked at how easy it was. I said, "Wow, it's going to be my album cover." <laughs> yes. And but it was important because I really well. I'm from New Jersey, first of all, and, and I felt that that had a lot to do with the music I had, I was writing, and uh, also it was going to make me. It was going to allow me to be myself. You know, it was going to different differentiate me from 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 some of the other artists that were out there at the time. And that's always a struggle in your early years is how to sustain and main, maintain and hold on to your identity and, and what you want to be about because it can go a lot of different ways, you know. How much do you, what do you owe Dylan? I mean, what's the connection between you and Dylan? How do you see it other than the fact that you were songwriters, the fact that you, you seem to do it more poetically than your contemporaries and that there was substance in what you wrote about and you both had that lean and hungry and dark well, I was, when I was 15, and I, you know, I, was, I had Highway 61 on my, my little mono record player in my room at night, and you know, yeah. listened to it, you know, a thousand times, and and uh, uh, you know, it's just one of those debts that you you can never repay. You know, that's all. It's just. But you it's feel just, the connection. Uh, it's it's, uh, yeah. Well, I just have a deep involvement with his music, you know, like any other fan. You know, that's 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 I always have. And More Dylan always, than anybody. Was, um. Well, I liked a lot of different kinds of music. You know, he, I think he was really important in the sense of uh, bringing into uh, you know, pop songwriting all kinds of different topics and subjects and serious subjects that, that hadn't been really a part of the pop world previously very often, you know. And uh, I was interested in going there, and that's, that's him. When you look at anybody who's doing that, I think whether it was... Uh, Marvin Gaye, what's going on? Or I yeah. think even Public Enemy, to some degree, to, you got You trace it back in some fashion to that moment when he said, "Hey, I can. You can sing about this and get on the radio. You can sing about it and get on the radio, and people are going to connect to it and, and 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 try to make sense of it." You know, so that was a big, big influence. But I think the first one, I mean, obviously, was Elvis. And, and what was Elvis? And uh, that was, you know, my mother's. My mother sort of had him on TV <laughs> when I was nine years old, and and and. and I was shocked. I stood there. I was playing with my, I didn't, and and, and I just there was some, some shock of recognition even at that young age. Like maybe just that looks like fun. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's for me. And uh, there is a. And, uh, go ahead. No, just, you know, how do you do that? And then and, uh, and so, but there was, a, but I think also I, I I drew a lot from anything I heard. You know, I, I liked all the one hit wonder swinging the dying one hit wonder rock bands, bands of, that you. That you saw, and you know, you, you heard once and never saw again. Music Machine, uh, who, you know, just came up with some record that was just essential. And and part of what I did, I wanted to have a lot of that into it too, just nonsense and fun and and clowning around on stage. And and uh, uh, you know, I I wanted all those elements in in my music in some fashion. And so I was really sort of influenced by, but basically everything I'd heard up and. You know, all the way through. You, know. you told Ed Bradley that story nice. about going to see Elvis down there, and, and you tried to get in, you climbed, yeah. up, you climbed yeah, over the like wall and, <laughs> at Graceland, and said, "Hey, I want to see the, yeah. the Elvis." And and they said, "Who are you?" And you said, "I'm on the cover of Time and Newsweek. I'm Bruce Springsteen." And they said, "Out of here." Yeah, is that, that was, about uh, it? I, yeah, I don't think he believed me. I, I, I was I was telling I was telling Bob yesterday, Costas, and, and I said that was the only time I ever really pulled that one out. I was always kind of embarrassed. But I said, but that night, man, I had to pull out everything I had. Yeah, exactly. I said, man, <laughs> I, any anything I had that I thought was gonna get me to get, get me up that front stoop, I was too, I was pulling out. You know. So, Why did you want to so, see uh, Elvis? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> I, you know, I was just a, a, I was a big fan. And have the songs gotten more political over time? You think? My music? I, yeah. uh, I don't know. I, I think that uh, it's uh, my music because of what I wrote about always had political implications and I suppose that came up out of out originally out of uh, my home life you know and, and my experience growing up and my relationship with my father and and understanding and trying to understand the concept of work and how work plays a central role in your life you know 
I had two real, very, uh, very different examples. You know, I mean, my mother's relation to work was was very joyous, was very happy. You know, and uh, provided the entire family with stability. And and it 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 what she gained from it was a, an entire mode of behavior. Uh, you get up in the morning at a certain time. You, you prepare yourself. You get yourself ready to go to, to a job. And uh, uh, you walk down the street, you know, and you're there at a particular time in the day, you know. And you interact with your coworkers, and that's a big part of your social life and, and your work life and your place in the world. Uh, uh, you know, you, you're doing something that has a purpose. You know, there, there's, there's a reason you're there besides just feeding your family. You know, you're... you're you're a part of the social fabric. You know, you're what's you're what's holding the world together. You're what's holding your town together. It's what's holding your family together. Uh, and and I always remember she walked with tremendous pride and 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 uh, strength, enormous strength. And and it gave it gave such great comfort, such great great comfort. You know, to to a child. You know, it was like that makes sense. I understand. I think my dad had different experiences. He worked, was involved with pain, you know. Uh, he lost his hearing when he worked in the plastics factory. He lost a lot of his hearing. He, he struggled to find work and to go to work, you know. Uh, it, 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 it led to a, uh, uh, the, the, the regulation of behavior that work provides uh, wasn't a big part of his life, you know, and that was painful, you know, for everybody involved. Um, uh, that's essential. That's central. That's central to the way that we live and think about ourselves and 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 who we are and and, and the, the place we live in. And, uh, and so I, I saw both sides of it. I saw what happens when that's not present. There is pain, <laughs> and there is anger and and uh, deep, deep. Uh, uh, just a, it's a very it's a, it's a destructive force. People, you wither away. You waste away. You don't know where you're going or who you are. And, and you take that out on the people that you care about, which is something you don't want to do, you know. But it happens. So that's what I wrote about. That was what I wrote about. And um, uh, that was really, really important. It's the single thing I've written about my, my entire life. That fundamental idea, the importance of that idea in society, the cost of not providing that for whether it's for... for that people will be able to take care of their families, to have, have productive jobs. Uh, the, the debasement of ourselves, you know, uh, in, uh, in, in not having a society where that's provided to all our citizens, you know. Uh, that was, it, it all grew from there. It grew from my experience and, 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 and my trying to sort out my experience. I didn't grow up in a political household. I didn't have some particular ideology or, or be a particularly political person from where I came from, you know. But I needed and wanted to write about those things because I felt they were essential. So a lot of my music has grown out of that place over the years, you know, and continues to to this day. And that is in part, I assume, connected to the reason that you were affronted when the Reagan campaign Use born in the USA. Well, I thought he was he was hurting working people. Yeah, exactly. You know, and uh, you know, it, it, it actually wasn't born in the USA. He just included me in a speech right, at a particular time. Right. He mentioned time. you. Right. And you know, Republicans at that time they co-opted anything that was American, and and and, Black, and my whatever, music has yeah. been American music. You know, but uh, you know, I, I thought the policies were destructive. I thought they contributed to the. In, disparity in wealth that continues to this day, you know, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, it made me angry and, and uh, uh, made me think a lot harder about what I was doing and, 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 and the way to communicate what I was, what I was communicating. Do you feel have the s same connection to those ideas when your life is so different today than it was then, when you have, in a sense, you now have a great joy, wife? Children, you know, financial resources. Um, is well, is the deep depth of that connection to those ideas any different? I think that that uh, those feelings, those emotions, those things that give. Um, I, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I think basically, uh, you're right from the entirety of your experience. You know, first first of all, I think, and. Uh, 
uh, you know, it, it's it's that's it's a, those are things that I've been driven to write about, and I find that I still am. You know, I'm, I've been fortunate, and I've been able to make a a, a real life for my to get for myself and and my family, and to have productive work. You know, but I had too I've had too long a history of of all, already by the time I was 16, I, I was steeped in it, you know, and and I think that anybody that's really been kicked around in some fashion or seen people be kicked around, hey, that's why, you know, you don't forget it. You write every day? I mean, you write frequently? I wish I did, you know, I, it's like I, sometimes I, uh, I'll go for, I've gone for long periods of time without writing, you know. Because and you didn't feel it? Because, because I, I don't have an idea. No idea. <laughs> no emotion have, that drives I, you to sit down and... I don't have an idea or, or, or whatever's in there is sort of gestating. I, I've, uh, uh, you know, it's hard to believe that that's, you know, that, that, that but, but I think that, that I've gone long periods of time without doing much writing. I've gone through very difficult periods of, of forcing myself to write. Uh, and... And I think what happens is is you move in and out of you know there's different veins you know a different you're, you're sort of you're a miner <laughs> you know you're down there mining yeah. and uh, and you hit a vein and 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 that you know goes with you for a very long time and and then then it then it may dry up and you'll move on to something else. I've written about a lot of different things and uh, initially my work had was you know was I think I had the social implications all through through eighty five. Say, yeah. and then I wor then I wrote a lot about some domestic life right. and, and, relationships. and relationships. And then I've gone back to doing the other thing with Tom Job when I rediscovered right. that place in myself. And, and what and, was the and, impetus and, for and, uh, Tom Job? Um, it began probably with Streets of Philadelphia, where Jonathan Demi really, really. Uh, uh, called me up and said he, he had a movie that he was making and he wanted uh, a, a song for it and I knew what the movie was about. I'd read a little bit about it and I told him I'd give it a shot. And so he sort of drew me into uh, in, in, into that kind of work again, really, just by asking, you know. Uh, and then uh, that work meaning writing songs for movies or that no movie? for that 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 probably were were. Uh, Non non relationship right, and basically right, had right. some sort of social theme right, in some right. fashion, you know. Uh, uh, he he basically drew me. He really that call sort of drew me into it again. And once I did it, I I, I found a great satisfaction in it, and I felt also it had been about a decade since I'd really written directly about those things, and I think that I felt refreshed. And and I'd been living in California for a while, and and. And I, I'd reading a lot of different kinds of stories in the newspaper and traveling up the, through the Central Valley to, to uh, visit my folks who lived up north, and and it was a, uh, it was a sort of a, 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 I saw a lot of the same stories being acted out in different ways, and I uh, and I, all of a sudden it was something I really wanted to write about. So, and it was about refinding that place in myself. You know, so that's really how the song Tom Joad really came about. Was it's, it's about asking yourself, you know, it's not really about, you know, I, I was called, I have a film, film director who's a friend of mine, and, and we always joke, oh yeah, I, hey, I just wrote Old Brother, where art thou? You know, it's like if there's all the Preston Sturges picture Sullivan's right, Travels, right, right. where, you know, the movie company wants him to do the uh, Follies of 1939, but he wants to make Old Brother, where art thou? So I always call him and say, because hey, he, he's made, uh, I have a friend who's made Old Brother, where art thou? Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, so, so I always call him, yeah, I think I just wrote, I think I just wrote Old Brother, you know, but it was, it was really, it was a, it was something where, it was a, just a dialogue I was having with myself. It was the continuance of, of of those issues being, I think, very urgent issues in society, uh, and I was interested in, in in reconnecting to those things and reconnecting to the part of myself that written about them. Where are you now in terms of what you want to do? I mean, this is in a sense an alternative. To what we yeah. have seen, you know, and we see the things that were in your head when you mm -hmm. wrote other things, uh, mm -hmm. and what was not included for whatever reason, you know. What, what do you want to write about now? What are you writing about? Um, I've, uh, I suppose at the moment I've, I've, I've had some acoustic music going that basically is an extension of the music I wrote for Tom Joad. Um, you like that, don't you? With it's just it, it's just things that fascinate me at the moment. I think it, it's it's just. 
there's stories to tell, and it's just what come it's what comes up at a particular moment, you know. But at the same time, I've been working on uh, electric music that that uh, um, uh, you know I've been doing a lot of different things. I haven't really settled on exactly what I'm going to do next at the moment. I'm waiting to see what presents itself, and then I try to do what I do best. Really, the past six or seven months has been kind of reflective with the book and. And, and, the book and, is and, looking at and, the uh, book is the songs that this is a book know, of all the songs that you have yeah. ever written. Yeah, all the release songs, all not, the release not songs. including these, you know. Uh -huh. So I, I think I spent I spent a lot of time sort of recently doing that. Previous to that, I was uh, I've been working on some new stuff and I've just gone back to it. So, but I, I don't I don't know what it's going to be yet. Yeah, but it's interesting to do. That. I mean, what do you think? You come out of thinking about all the songs and looking at this with these extraordinary photographs that are in here, and 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 this, it it, it does something to your head in a sense. I mean, if if one tends to look at an artist who's doing a retrospective of his work. I mean, it must give fuel some new ideas about where I came from and where I want to go, yeah, you know? It, and it uh, puts you back in touch with roots, and that sometimes you get on the road and you're moving so fast you forget to where you've yeah, that, been. Yeah, actually, that was one of the things that I liked about doing this. I came out of a pretty quiet period as far as just acoustic music right, was, right. Was, was quiet, and, and, and so much of my, of my work life was physical and... Uh, uh, in the sense, the music was physical, and, and you were playing loud, and you were, and and uh, and that was probably what people remember most. You know, is that the, the, the intense concerts, the and, kind and of so, stuff we saw in yeah, the video. Yeah, and so I think that sort of going back and, and, and going through a lot of the music, and where where that was this, the essence of what I did on a lot of it was was uh, part of why I did it was I thought it was something that would reconnect me to that particular feeling, and. Uh, uh, which is something I'm interested in doing right now. I'd like to do something that was a little louder and more and more physical. A tour? I, I don't know. I don't have any. I'm going to. I'm going to dodge that one for you because I've been asked that a few times. You know, uh, um, I don't have any plans to tour at the, at this particular. But you moment, want to. You know. You want but, to uh, somewhere deep inside. <laughs> you want to. You, I like to play. You because know, you like, like to be loud again. I mean, you've been you've <laughs> yeah. been silent. You'd like to be yeah. loud again. Yeah, it's fun. And watching it this fun. must make you say. You know the physical side you know, of me. It's it's it's. I've always enjoyed. I, I've always enjoyed that, and it's the immediacy of it. So it's 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 something I've enjoyed doing. Sure. Do you have the E Street Band sitting waiting for you? Too? I don't know if they're sitting waiting. They all got lives of their own. You know, they. Uh, uh, Gary's in Nashville, and he's he's a producer. He's produced a lot of of, of 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 great records out of Nashville. Clarence is in Florida. I saw him a couple of weeks ago, and and uh, uh, you know, uh, Steve's been working on a. A television show. He's been doing some acting, and uh, Nils has been doing his own touring. And uh, Roy produces in California. And they've all got kids now, and you know it's a, it's a pretty different situation than even ten years ago. And ten years ago, when when you saw that stuff, none of us, for a few, had small children, and yeah. and so people have really gone out and made different lives for themselves. And I think uh, we had a, we had a great time, and and you know lifelong. It's a lifelong relationship. You're gonna do it. Something that, You're uh, gonna do it. <laughs> you can't. So I mean, one of these days it we'll doesn't get, get in the way of the stones. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but it's, it's it's in a second. The E Street Band will be together in a second. I mean, you pick up the phone tonight and pick up the phone and call Florida and call. Stevie is where? He's in Hollywood? Or he's right he? around here somewhere. Yeah, right around he's here. blocks away, you I'm can, sure. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. You can hear the sound of your you know? voice. Come. But, I mean, you uh, could he, put this together. Watching. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be watching tonight. <laughs> he and he you... told me he was going to. So. <laughs> <laughs> he told you what he's going to be yeah. watching. So what do you say to him? I mean, he's saying to you, you know, they'd, you know, they'd love this, wouldn't yeah. they? Uh, I think so, you know. And... Uh, uh, yeah, Why are you it, hesitant it, it, to announce a new tour <laughs> on my show? I mean, come on! Oh, you rascal, you! you rascal, I mean, you. it's the littlest. You know, it's, it's, you know, you know I, it's a perfect match know. for you coming here to to use my platform <laughs> oh. as an opportunity to say yes. You know, you well, know. we we've talked about it over the years, and and, and, honest, and if there's something where it's committed, I, I I would say you know, but I, I I hate to get into doing something where all of a sudden something doesn't happen, and and then. Everybody's disappointed, including, you know, yourself, so. Right, exactly, including me. Um, and myself, you know. <laughs> what has the E Street Band meant to you? I think that um, the, the fundamental thing I think was, was we did an unusual thing, and really it's something that I don't know if it ever quite existed previously, you know, uh, in the sense that, that they allowed me to communicate 
And I say in the book that they expanded the boundaries and the power of my music. And uh, by their presence and, and by their intensity, and, and, and they allowed me at night to call up a sense of community and a sense of friendship and a sense so when people came in, I think that, that, that they invested themselves because they saw themselves. You know, their friends and your best pal and, and the guy next door and and uh, and that was something that I that was important I wanted to create I wanted to create that community on stage and uh, uh, that was an essential part I think of what I communicated and I could not have done it without their consistency and dedication and and, and presence you know uh, it was really they just fueled you, fueled you on a nightly basis. You know, Clarence is always a long-standing uh, source of, of positive energy and, and spirit, and some some missing connection. That when we when we hit one another in Asbury Park the first night we we played together, it was like you know, it was just something 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 felt different. And uh, and also, they, how many people have you? Do you know still that you knew from when you were, you know, 18 or 19 and, and, and that you have sustained relationships with, you know, through good times and rough times and, and uh, uh, they're an essential part of your soul and what you do, you know, that, that was something. They took my music and, and, and made it present and real on a nightly basis and they stood in for all the people in my songs that I wrote about, you know. Was an essential relationship, one of outside of my family, the most uh, essential relationships in my life. You know, very, very, very important, very important. Should they have been included in the Hall of Fame? I think that they definitely they need to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, and they and I think the Hall of Fame needs to come up with a mechanism that somehow honors musicians. Uh, whether it's uh, Neil Young did some of his greatest work with Crazy Horse, you know, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's uh, Bill Black. Uh, Scotty Moore, DJ Fontana, who were there at the Sun Sessions, you know. Uh, at the moment, uh, you know, it, 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 I think that I, I was very proud of being signed as a solo artist. I was very proud of, of the independence. I shaped my career uh, uh, very personally. And, it, and, and that, that personalness in the sense of that singular voice was something that's given my music consistency through 25 years. It's, what allowed me to, it's, what's, it's what's allowed me to play that story out. But I couldn't have realized what I did without my band, you know. They were the, the living realization of, 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 of many of those ideas. And I think the Hall of Fame needs to come up with a, a mechanism of some sort that's going to honor musicians in that fashion. This is Bruce Springsteen tracks. This is songs. Um, you're, I can't tell you how much I'm pleased that you're here. Thank you. I had a great time. I've seen the show very often. And it's interesting to finally see this table up <laughs> close. You're more interested in the table than you were with me. <laughs> you're all right, too. <laughs> so. um, you're going to perform for us. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to sing a song. All right, sing some songs. You know? <laughs> I thank you very much, Bruce. Thanks. I hope we can do it again. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Born down in a dead man's town first kick I took was when I hit one End up like a dog that's been beat too much You spend half your life just to cover it up I was born in the USA Born in the USA I got in a little hometown jam So they put a rifle in my hand Sent me off to the foreign land Go and kill the yellow man I was born in the USA Born in the USA Come back home to the refinery Hiring man says something was up to me Went down to see my VA man he said, son, don't you understand? Had a brother at Kaysan, 
fighting off of Vietcong. They're still there, he's all gone. He had a woman he loved in Saigon. I got a picture of a me and her. Down the shadow of the penitentiary, I find the gay spines of the refinery. I'm ten years burning down the road, got nowhere, nowhere to go. I was born in the U.S. Born. 